You know what? I think the person with a better record should start the fucking oh. show. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You want to be, go be the host. You, you, you run the show today. <laughs> We're talking about a record with a tie. Like, I have a better record than you. Go ahead, Austin. Go ahead, start the show. Good morning, everybody. Welcome and back. Welcome to the Total Bases podcast. I am your host, Austin Spiro. I am back triumphantly because I have the better record. Yeah. Um, so we are here to talk about uh, fantasy baseball today. With me is... Uh, my counterpart with the worst record, Felipe Malicio. Felipe, how you doing today? What worst record? <laughs> what worst record? What I thought you guys were both three and two. Record? I thought you guys were both three and two. Yeah, we're, we're, we're both three and two here. Oh, but he's yeah, he's three, two, and league. one. Yeah, but he's both three, two, and one. Yeah, is and that I'm three is? and three. I'm three and three with, uh, you know, Brandon Drury uh, <laughs> helping me claw my way back oh. to prominence here. Unless he doesn't get a vaccine and then can play in Toronto, and then that screws the whole well, push here. I, I'm pretty sure that's the last time Cincinnati plays in Toronto this year, so. It's the last time you'll play on my team, I can tell you that much. Oh. I don't know, man. <laughs> Then release them. Then just cut them. Let somebody else have them. No, no, no. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then well, all- that's why. I- Go ahead. Sorry. And then you've all. And then you've already heard him. Sean Connor Flannery is here as well. Sean, how you doing this morning? Somebody save me. I'm like in no man's land between the damn trenches between these two guys. Literally on the screen. If you're watching us live or you're watching this on YouTube, I am smack dab in between both of them. And they are just sending missiles on my screen. I'm in the middle and they're just sending missiles and bombs back and forth. And I'm having to dodge them over here in the screen. They're, they're yelling. I'm scared. This is like mommy and daddy yelling at each other, but hopefully, hopefully we will get to the most added, most dropped and some names to pay attention to without too much uh, vitriol. uh, Believe they call that collateral damage. Yeah, Yeah. I don't want to be collateral damage. <laughs> yeah, because we uh, need you to uh, make sense of all of this. All right, so um, come back after a two week hiatus. I got to start throwing <laughs> missiles, man. No. <laughs> By the way, uh, Brandon Drury. I think uh, he's. I see that he's been added in nine percent of leagues. He went from sixty last week to sixty nine percent this nice this week. Nice. <laughs> so, and I think it's just the all, all the all the uh, people who did their research online to find out when they found out that he wasn't taking the vaccine. So now he's like the hero. <laughs> so they had to boost up his. Now nah, boost. Ha, you made a pun, a vaccine yeah. pun. He, anyway. he got boosted. <laughs> oh, he is boosted but, in the rankings. Yeah. And oh. boosting uh, the score, my score too. So I, I can't hate the guy too much, but man, I don't know. You're 29 years old. You got nothing to play for. Get the vaccine and get your, get your stats in. Come on guy. Anyway, but uh, we're not here to talk about Drury, even though we already did for like the better portion of our morning, which thank God we weren't recording. <laughs> I think we would have been shut down by the FCC. (laughs) It's it's the internet, man. There's no rules here. (laughs) Well, no, this week we're only talking about guys who are 50%, 50% um, owned. So uh, Brandon Drury misses the cut there. So we do have a few guys that we can talk about here. You know, and I think I I have it on the other screen over at Fangraphs, and I think I have it down. Yes, I could do it by position and not lose my statistics that I've been using. So I have four catchers. So who wants to go first? Uh, let's go with Austin since we, we haven't heard from him in like more than two weeks. I have four catchers, four, count them. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Do you, can you tell that I have a daughter at home, a baby daughter at home? <laughs> um, I have four guys. I have a William Contreras, MJ Melendez, Yadier Molina, and Danny Jansen, who are owned in less than 50% of the leagues. They, have, they showed up on the CBS Sports um, most uh, uh, added list in the last week or so. So those are the four catchers that show up. Austin, who is your catcher to get this week? Um, my guess, Yadier Molina is not exciting. Neither is Danny Jansen. I would go with the young, the young gun, MJ Melendez. Yeah, right. um, MJ Melendez is, I mean, he's already played 15 games up in 2022. He's hitting 261 with 320, 457 slash line with a 126 weighted runs created plus. Um, so he's done pretty well. He's got um, some pretty good power. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, you know, he's going to, he's going to be able to get some at bats with uh, their, their, I think the Royals are starting to kind of move uh, Perez uh, to split catcher DH role um, for his bat. Um, and I mean, I think just the other thing is Yanni or Molina is not exciting. Neither is Danny Jansen. Um, I think, you know, this guy, we've been talking about him 
for a while. He's the number two prospect in KC system. Um, his exit velocity is in the 77th percentile. Um, you know, he's, he's hitting the ball pretty hard and, you know, he's coming out the gate pretty, pretty well. So I think he might be one of these rookies that comes out and does really well. What, what is he going to do next season? I don't know, but I think if you're looking for um, production at catcher, you maybe, you know, in the draft, you didn't time your catchers right and didn't pick up a catcher. I think this is the guy that you go pick up and hope that he does well. And Sean, we've talked about Melendez for a long time now, and, you know, he's doing what he's doing. Um, so with that being said, is there any other catcher worth yeah. taking a look at here? I, I think people are just forgetting that Danny Jansen was like, through the first three games of the season, was like, Great. He was fantastic. Uh, ended up having, a what was it, four hits, five hits with a couple of home runs. And then he goes on the aisle with an oblique strain, comes back um, about 10 days ago. It was like last Friday, Saturday, something like that. Saturday before last, I think. Uh, hit a home run. And, of course, he's splitting time back there with Alejandro Kirk. Um, he's only picked up a couple of hits, but you're coming back from an oblique. You're not playing every day. Uh, Danny Jansen is still my go-to guy here. He is a guy that we – people talked about for forever uh the plate discipline is there mj melendez i'm not trying to hate on mj melendez i i like him and i think he's going to be solid but i'm going to take the slightly more polished well-rounded danny jansen because i think honestly danny jansen just got forgot when he got hurt everyone cut him and they forgot how well he did in that first series and now they're like oh okay maybe i should pick up danny jansen again which i already have in the baseball life league Actually, I think he was on my IL and never even dropped him. But yeah, uh, out of those four, definitely taking Danny Jansen. Agree with Austin. Yadier Molina does nothing for me at this point. Yeah. And uh, I, like I said, MJ Molina, this is my guy. Um, and I've also been keeping an eye on William Contreras, too, to, uh, just to see if he'll get some playing time. Well, let me double check something here. I want to see how much. Oh, he, he had like four home but... runs out of like seven hits so far this year. He, uh, he only has like six or seven hits, but they're all like bombed. Um, it, that's all I, you I, need, man. It, it feels very quad A. Like I'm gonna, whenever I do hit the ball, it's gonna go far. But I'm not, I'm not really sure. I trust his contact ability. Yeah, so well, Contreras is his brother, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the that's the other reason why you keep an eye on because because of the bloodline there. All right, we switch over to first base. Uh, and I got four more to go. Four more. So Sean, we'll start with you. I got the list is Darren Ruff. Luis Arias, Christian Walker, or Hunter Dozier. And yes, Luis Arias for the Minnesota Twins is first base eligible because well, he plays everywhere. Yeah, I mean, and he's also terrible everywhere else. But the easy pick here is going to be Christian Walker, who looking at his end result numbers, you're like, OK, there's nothing special there. Um, but a, a quick little check out over to Baseball Savant and you'd be like, oh, OK. Uh, he is absolutely smoking the crap out of the ball. Seth Beer is demoted. Paven Smith is in the outfield. Christian Walker has the clear path to playing time. He's actually an elite defender at first base, already at four outs above average. Uh, so that's going to keep him on the field. And when it comes to the uh, his, his batted ball metrics and stuff so far this year, if I can find him... He was up there in like some crazy names. Yeah, there we go. Uh, he has a 405 expected Woba um, sandwiched in between guys like Ronald Acuna Jr. and Lee Swart Robert at 407 and 408. And ahead of guys like Kyle Tucker, uh, Phenom this year, Willie Adamas, Manuel Margot, Christian Yelich, uh, Pete Alonzo. He's ahead of guys like that. Uh, Christian Walker's absolutely hitting the crap out of the ball. Um, just kind of, you know, we're, all teams are trying to get through this weird ball phase right now where there seems to be more than one or two types being used. So uh, I will take Christian Walker and hitting the ball hard uh, over the other guys, even though I do like Luis Arias. He's always been a, a fan favorite for me. So, yeah. Uh, what well, any uh, chance that Darren Ruff can actually, um, cause every time I think about the giants, I think all oh, platoon systems everywhere, platoon systems everywhere can he garner more playing time than, than than not in San Francisco, especially with a lot of guys coming back from injury now? I mean, it's so hard for me to like when it comes to Darren Ruff, like I like the profile. He hits the ball hard. He walks a lot. It's finding out where he needs to play. Cause I think right now he's getting a lot of his playing time in left field over first base. Well, okay. So he split time equally between um, he started nine games at 
first, 10 at left field, played in 15 in left field and only 10 at first. It's just a, a playing time issue with him. And like you said, the platoon situation. Uh, he is a, a nice guy to have in daily leagues, though. I, I've had him in daily leagues before. Absolutely crushes left-handed pitching. So if you can ever plug him just in there for a day against lefties, he, he's a win. All right, Austin, uh, Luis Arias or Hunter Dozier, which direction you want to go with? Um, let's go. See, I like I like Arias, but I like Arias for like average purposes. Um, Hunter Dozier is good for. Um, he's got that multi-positional eligibility. He's got first base. He's got third base. He's got the outfield. Um, the I'm problem the with outfield. the problem with Dozier is he doesn't walk much. His strikeout percentage is a little higher than I would like. Um, you know, and he doesn't hit the ball as hard. Um, you know, I feel like Arias would be the better choice over Hunter. If you had to choose between Arias or Hunter Dozier, even though Hunter Dozier has better 2022 numbers right now, um, if I remember correctly, he has a better slash line. Um, I would, I would over the long term, I would go Arias. If you're looking for short term right now, so like a stop gap, you have somebody on the IL, um, and you know, you're just waiting. I would, I would go with Hunter Dozier because he has a hotter bat right now. Um, I think it just depends on what you need. Yeah, Dozier right now in the month of May has an 18.1% strikeout rate. So yeah, that's his, I'll say his strikeout rate dropping. so far on the year is actually uh, a career low, but so is the the walk rate. And uh, that made me go look down here at his uh, like swing percentage, chase percentage, um, career high swing percentage. Um, where's the chase? A career high chase percentage that uh, Kansas City teams just like kind of being uber aggressive, swinging everything. Tell me where you've heard that before. Typical <laughs> Kansas City. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. But uh, of the four guys here, he's also the most aggressive. And, you know, so it's not surprising, but, you know, he's he's holding his own. All right. Let's move quickly move to second base. And also I don't have any. It's like he's hitting the ball on the ground more this season. Ah. Uh, he's got ground ball percentage of 42.6%. That is that is the highest he's had it since the 2018 season. 2019, 34.5%. 2020, 39.1%. 2021, 38.3%. And now it's up in 2022 to 42.6%. Yeah. Mm. 42 isn't something that kills you, kills you, but it's definitely a, a rise from his last three three seasons. Yeah. Why is that? Why, is there, why do you think have... there's a rise? Hmm. Uh, I mean, he you see that the pull percentage is like stupid high compared to the last few years. Yeah. Uh, so I would assume a lot of those ground ball, the increase in ground balls would equate a little bit to the rise in this pull percentage as well. All right. Uh, so when I click on second base over at the fan cards, cause like I said, I have a custom list on the other screen here. Uh, no second baseman showed up. So we quickly moved to shortstop and see if some of these other second basemen show up at third base or whatever. But I believe Luis Arise. Uh, Austin, uh, rekindle my memory. Does Luis Arias have second base eligibility in our league? Luis Arias in the um, in the uh, Mardi Gras league. In the Mardi Gras league, uh, yeah. yes, I believe okay. he does. I'll do a quick search, but I believe he does. All right. Well, I'm already there. Hold on. Let me. Uh, he's yeah, played. He, he's played five games there this year, but he played uh, 48 last year. So yeah, she, he should have it. Yeah, he does have second base eligibility. So even though he's not playing there anymore because he was first so base, second base, third base, left field, and DH. There you go. All right, moving to shortstop, Brendan Donovan or Andrew Velasquez. And Andrew Velasquez has been awful this month uh, with a ops of 670, but he does show up on the as as one of the more uh, uh, added players on over at the CBS Sports uh, Fantasy platform. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the Angel fans uh, taking over because that's they want to do and getting all their favorite players. I don't know. So I guess the guy to talk about is Brendan Donovan. Uh, who has been crushing the ball for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, Austin, the only concern I have for him is he plays for the St. Louis Cardinals. Not that that's a negative, but they they don't care who you are, man. If you're not playing up to par, they'll just replace you. And Nolan Gorman's up. So what's your take on Brandon Donovan and the uh, uh, St. Louis Cardinals? Uh, I think Brendan Donovan is going to be the one that, even though he's crushing the ball right now, Brendan Donovan is going to eventually be the one that gets pulled, uh, that gets um He's the odd man out. You have Nolan Gorman, who's the highly touted prospect um, coming up, power hitting prospect. Um, he's coming up. They're going to give him time at second base. They're moving Tommy Edmond, who's having a hell of a season already over at shorts over to shortstop. So that's pretty much it. Right. And so they'll probably have Brandon Donovan as a, uh, a backup. They'll probably have him as a bench option along with Paul DeYoung. 
Um, so, I mean, right now the Cardinals seem to have a surplus of middle infielders that all want time, but they're not going to, they're not going to get, they're not going to get time. Right. So I think as of right now, anyway, Gorman and Edmund are probably going to see most of the time in the middle infield. And then, you know, when, the, when either one of them need, need a day off or let's say Gorman strikes out too much, then I think that's when you'll see them trying to give Donovan another chance. But, um, if you give Donovan another chance to out on the bench, is he going to do well coming back in after having a torrid start and then losing his spot to Nolan Gorman, the highly touted power hitting prospect? Um, I, I, I'm not quite, I'm not, I would not be so sure about Donovan's future um, as a long term, but short term, I would, you know, pick him up. He's crushing the ball right now. I would not, absolutely not pick up Squiddy. I would not pick up Andrew Velasquez. He has been terrible this month. And he, really, in my mind, he's not an offense. He doesn't look like an offensive um, shortstop for the Angels. He looks, to be honest, he looks a lot like what Andrew, what Andrelton Simmons was to the Angels. He's a defensive shortstop. That's there to improve the infield defense overall because that infield defense for the Angels is pretty, is pretty solid. Um, and I think that's what Velasquez is there for. And that's why he earned that spot because he is a very good defensive shortstop. And uh, Sean, um, what's your take on Brendan? I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear an, a different spin on that. So yeah, a very passive hitter. He's not going to, he just doesn't chase a lot. That's leading the, the high OBP right now. Uh, he's walked more than he struck out of the major league level, which for a guy with only, you know, however many games it's been, Oh God, uh, 21 games through 21 games. It's uh, to have more walks than strikeouts is pretty interesting. Um, he is in a bit of a platoon situation, the same as Nolan Gorman right now. Roster resource has Brendan Donovan tabbed as the DH with uh, Juan Yepes in left field. Uh, and since Gorman's been promoted on Friday, the game that Gorman debuted in Donovan DH and bat second Gorman played second base and batted sixth. And then today in the lineup, D Brendan Donovan is slated to play right field and bat fifth, and Gorman slated to play second and bat second. So it seems that those guys could be in the lineup together at the same time a good bit with Tommy Edmond being the one that slides over to shortstop, which is Donovan's natural position, but he has played a little bit of outfield in the minors, and you would have to think that if the Cardinals could, you know, get their druthers, that they would rather play Donovan in the outfield and D.H. Yepes, and then when they face a lefty, they can, you know, of course, Pujols enters the lineup, and likely Edmundo Sosa enters the lineup as well. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think it's like one of those, like Donovan just immediately goes to the bench. Uh, I think they like what he brings to the table. Uh, it's kind of like a, it gives me the Tommy Edmund vibes all over again. of like the, mm. the random middle infield prospect that nobody's really heard of, but was off to a solid start and gets called up and you're like, wow, this guy's pretty good. He's not hitting the ball all that great, but I'd rather, I mean, at the top of the lineup, if you're working counts, walking, like that's going to play into your favor to stay on the field. Um, at shortstop, the, the Mets played him uh, this past week, of course, with Alonzo's walk off. And in the first game of that series, the ball got hit to him like three times in the first, like been... two in, uh, no, uh, uh, Donovan. Okay. And he, you know, was the, he, they had him at short and Deadman at second. And Donovan looked like a deer in the headlights and bobbled a couple of plays. And I'm like, oh my God, poor kid. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a primary second baseman. But yeah, so uh, we'll see what he does. I, I, I like the approach. He's hitting it on the ground too much, but Listen, it, solid line drive rate and solid walk rate. You're a win in my book. I just got to say, we, we warned you about Tyler O'Neill. We tried to warn you about Tyler O'Neill in the offseason. No one listened to us. And now look where he's at. And now they're using a shoulder injury as an excuse for his struggles. No, nah, man, he got exposed. He, that's what happened. He got exposed. And and I, you know what I, what I kept telling Cardinal fans in the Baseball Life League? Don't get excited for Tyler O'Neill because the Cardinals are just going to find some other replacement to from the from from their Triple A team to replace him and 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 he'll be forgotten. So what has Tyler O'Neill done? Still with the high strikeout rate, but none of the results from last year. We tried to tell you, and you people don't listen to you guys. Don't pay attention. And now look at you, pathetic. <laughs> What's funny? Thing. It's he's actually whiffed left less on fastballs and breaking balls this year than he did last year. Interesting. I don't know. I, I I didn't like him going into this year. Anytime I see the plus thirty strike up percentage, I'm like, yeah. Can you really hit the ball? <laughs> the one the one thing that I ha that I'm noticing right now 
um, for uh, another thing to kind of watch out for with Brendan Donovan is in the minors. So when you're looking in the minors, double A and triple A for 2021, and then a little 25 games and, or I'm sorry, 16 games in 2022, he had a walk percentage of about 11, 12% and a K percentage of about 17% until, yeah. Um, and then now in the MLB in 2022 and, uh, 21 games, he has a 20.4 walk percentage and an 18 and a half K percentage. That's a really steep jump in walk percentage. Another jump you're seeing is power. So his isolated power is, um, in 2021, it was 130 and 207 in double A AA and triple A respectively. And then you're looking at 105 and 16 games in triple A in 2022. He gets called up to the MLB, 21 games in 2022 in the MLB. He has a 171 isolated power. So it seems like he's maybe overplaying just a little bit. So you might see a regress there. Um, when it comes to production from Brendan Donovan. But out of the two, when it comes to Brendan Donovan or um, Velazquez, I would go with Brendan Donovan for sure. All right. Uh, to third base, and because Donovan, for some reason, he shows up on the third base list, but we already talked about him, so yeah. no, no need <laughs> to talk about him again. Uh, got three guys for you. Uh, Sean, we'll start with you. Christopher Morel, uh, Josh Rojas, or Jace Peterson. Yeah, I'm, I, I I definitely got to pick Josh Rojas there. Yeah, of course uh, you are. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Christopher Morrell thing was cool. He comes up and he hits the home run. And he was available in my 30-team league, so I, like, quickly ran over there. And I was like, ooh, let me see if I'm interested in this guy. And I go and I look at his minors numbers, and they are literally – I mean, just scouting the stat line, I, I could be missing something completely. He wasn't that good in the minors, so I really don't care. Josh Rojas has been my guy for years now. Uh Played the first, I think it was like three, eight games to start the year before he got hurt. When I think also had an oblique. Um, and then he comes back and still hadn't had an extra base hit on the year. And, of course, he took full advantage in Chicago on, was that Friday or Saturday? It was Friday. It hit the three home runs all to center field. Uh, the box score had it as 25-mile-an-hour wins out to center, but I heard that they gusted up to like 40. Uh, at the ballpark so he took advantage of that and then of course since Josh Rojas and me can't have nice things the next day uh, he gets hit on the hand and to add insult to injury uh, the umpire said he swung and so he struck out (laughs) as well as got injured Uh, they did x-rays no broken bones just gotta no wait until you know a little bit of swelling goes down but Josh Rojas awesome loved him back you know years ago in the minors when he was just dominating the PCL with Guys like Abraham Toro. Oh, God, don't you remember? Those guys were minor leaguers. It was so much fun. But uh, multi-eligibility, he has literally no competition at third base in that Arizona lineup. Uh, He's always shown good plate discipline, can hit both sides. Even though he's a lefty, he hits lefties pretty well. So, yeah, Josh Rojas, definitely the guy to go for. Uh, Qualifies at second, third base, right field, and shortstop for the moment. Yeah, I'm a little worried about next year because right now they just seem to only want him at third base so he might lose that shortstop eligibility which in a 30 team league is more important to me than in most leagues so right right um oh my god i just realized yanni hernandez is with the diamondbacks yeah he got he got traded yeah um i I, right out of spring training right at the beginning of the year uh yeah holy crap yeah yanni yeah he's i had him up and down on my team he's I think got called up twice with Arizona uh, with injuries, you know, Ahmed was out and then Ahmed came up back. And so I think Yanni went down and yeah, Yanni Hernandez is still fun, but I I don't know. I'm not, not as fun as Josh Rojas. Right. Right. (laughs) Uh, Well, Austin, I mean, we, we, Christopher Morrell, he's on the bench right now with the Cubs uh, and Jace Peterson. uh, I forgot what his thing is. I just know that uh, he had pretty limited upside when I used to uh, cover uh, uh, on a regular basis, the major league baseball, beats for xnsports.com and i remember him being just like uh just a, a guy who can uh you know work account so really nothing special but i mean is there anybody you want to talk about on that uh, on that list you know like again christopher morale or jace peterson or you think josh rojas is the only option here i with- you know what i was sitting i'm sitting here typing in fan graphs and baseball savant trying to find something that you know to to really like, or to kind of be the devil's advocate with Jace Peterson or Christopher Morrell. Christopher Morrell has played five games. If you're 
if if you're drafting or if you're picking up Christopher Morrell on the waiver wire because of one home run, give me a break. Um, oh no, he hit another one yesterday, didn't he? Or something? I think he had yes. a, a sec- yeah, he hit another one, and I was like, maybe I'm an idiot, but yeah, yes, I'm not. I'm not. So I'm not buying Christopher Morrell at all. I'm not, it's a I'm fun not buying story, Christopher but... Morrell. I'm looking at his mine. I'm looking at his minor. Uh, I mean, he was below league average in the minors. So yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not jumping on that Morrell train unless like. I'd have to see a lot. Jace Peterson. I know there was a time where there was like a very short, like I think it was 20 game span where he was hitting the cover off the baseball about two or three years ago. And everybody, and for a brief time, people thought this guy was the next dude. I think he was on the Dodgers at the time, if I remember correctly. And, but since then, I mean, he's below league, he's below league average in almost every offensive statistic or every offensive slider. The only thing that he is either league average or above league average in is max exit velocity is at the 58th percentile and then walk percentage is at 86. Um, oh, I guess it's chase rate. But other than that, I mean, he's good defensively and he can play all over the field, but at the same time, he has the highest sample size out of any of the three that we've been talking about. He has 92 plate appearances and he's batting 213. And so, you know, 213, a 315 OBP and a 363 mm-hmm. slugging. He's not getting you, he's not really getting you much. I've never been really excited about Jace Peterson. I tried to be devil's advocate for this, but I think the, the out of those three, the one to go with is Josh Rojas. Well, it, it's funny because like Jace Peterson is one of those guys that he always seems to latch on, which makes me think there's like something that the baseball people see. I mean, obviously he, he walks a lot. I mean, a, a career near 11 and a half a uh, walk percentage. He's at 13% this year. So it seems like he has those competitive at bats that the teams like always look for. Cause you never know, like if you can work those at bats, like, you know, good things are likely to happen, but even with that kind of meager looking slash line, 213, 315, 363 in today's baseball environment, that's only 3% below league average. And <laughs> if, if you play with the defense, he has, you can play third short, uh, he gives you competitive at bats, a solid walk rate. Teams will play that. And so really, I mean, obviously, if I had to stack these guys, it's going to be Rojas and then probably about 10 floors and then Jace Peterson and then like Christopher Morales in the basement somewhere. Wait, where, um, where does Brendan Donovan fit in all this? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, Donovan's off to a little hot start. I expect some regression, but I, I think Donovan's going to be a solid little player too. Uh, Donovan well, kind of reminds me of Jace Peterson, probably less strikeouts though. Mm. Now, since we're doing doubles advocate stuff, then I mean, I remember Jace Peterson being a guy who can walk as much as he strikes out, and then he gets to the majors, and yeah, it seems like that uh, strikeout rate is ballooning up and up and up. Uh, and even in the month of May, which is the reason why a lot of people are are, are uh, adding him to their teams, uh, and he's so he's off to a great start, uh, a great May, two fifty six, three three fifty six, four eighty seven slug. Um, and he has the two home runs, and most importantly, for people who are desperate enough, four stolen bases at the age of thirty-two. So that's yeah, making I, people. I, I have six. I'm, I'm sure. Oh, oh, in May, in May, May, in May. yeah, in yeah, May, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I, I just, I was literally about to say something because I just noticed. I was like, damn, he had six stolen bases at thirty-two and only, you know, uh, ninety-two plate appearances. So that that is interesting. So maybe yeah, the it's... the speed part makes boost Peterson up a little bit. But the downside is, I mean, you talked about what's the strikeout rate? Twenty three percent by the career, twenty six so far in twenty twenty two. What was it last year? Twenty two and a half. So it keeps, yeah. I mean, he was around twenty two, twenty three percent for a long time outside yeah. of the um, the shortened season, so which weird, that was that's never been his thing in the minors. He's never. I mean, yeah, he will in short stints strike out that much, but usually when he was at the Padres, he was only striking out no more than sixteen, per, uh, no more than seventeen percent. Well, that that was also almost ten years ago now. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Well, in the month of May during his hot streak, he also has a strikeout rate of 33.3%. So, <laughs> so do what you will with that information. Uh, but obviously the 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 key thing is that he's stealing a lot of bases. So that's in, in Roto Leagues, that's going to get people desperate. And uh, to defend a little bit of Christopher Morrell, just a little bit, we might have a guy who can steal 15 bases and hit for 15 home runs because uh, the speed is there, the power is there, uh, the production isn't there in the minors as much. But... There's that problem. The, 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 the tools for it. The tools for it. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say here. Yeah, I, I just, I, I don't know. I'm just like. I know you don't like those guys, but uh, I mean, if you're desperate. I mean, 22. 
If Brandon, you're desperate, he, 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 has, <laughs> he has 11 uh, batted balls, one barrel, average EV at 95. But no, nah, I'm hard time buying into Christopher Morell. It's a fun story. Yeah. Uh, how can you not be romantic about baseball? But come on. <laughs> Moving on to outfield really quick because we still got pitchers to go. So we already talked about Morell. Where's Cole Calhoun, who was our GIF that we used for the. Oh, uh, Cole, I see Cole Cal- Calhoun's joined the podcast. Felipe, yeah. do you have any questions for Cole Calhoun? Yeah, um, what do you think of guys who brag about their fantasy teams when they have a tie <laughs> as well on the record? No, no, we're not going there. We're, continue the show. We're not going there. So yeah, Cole Cal- winning percentage, it's great. <laughs> so Cole Calhoun, uh, Ben Gamble, Luis Gonzalez, Tyler Naquin, Yadiel Hernandez, Jonathan Daza, Willie Castro, and E. Live White. Who? That's a lot of names. I know. I'm trying to figure out a way to kind of break this down, but uh let's let's do it this way uh awesome we'll go with you first let's see there's uh, okay we'll go with these five maybe one guy here that you want to talk about uh and this is from and this is ranked from best woba to low woba so we're gonna go with the low woba first uh we have one two three four five. tyler naquin yadiel hernandez jonathan daza willie castro and eli white who do you want to talk about oh i can't talk about me can't talk about Cole <laughs> oh man that's just, that's just weird first person over here <laughs> um Give me the names one more time. Sure. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Tyler Naquin, Yadiel Hernandez, Jonathan Daza, Willie Castro, and Eli White. Um. Let's see. Let's do. I don't want to do Eli White. Yeah, he um, sucks. Go ahead. Um. What was the first one? I can't. I, uh, I, uh, one, two, three. Today. Tyler Naquin. Tyler Naquin. Let's do Tyler Naquin. Um. So Tyler Naquin. Uh, he's on the reds, but if I remember correctly, he came out, he got out to a hot start, um, looking at his baseball savant sliders, seeing a pretty good amount of red, um, much like a lot of the reds, um, not, ah, uh, the, he, he has a lot of red and he plays for the reds. Ah. <laughs> That's a knee slapper. <laughs> uh, so he has 126 plate appearances, um, four homers. He's got three stolen bases. If you're looking for stolen bases, he can swipe a bag or two. Uh, 265, 312 OBP. So that's telling me that he's not walking much and a 479 slugging. So when he does hit, he hits for a pretty decent power. Right now he's at um, he's in the top, looks like 9% of the league and max exit velocity. So he is hitting the ball hard right now. His K percentage is a little high at 26.2%. Um, and his walk percentage is at 5.6%, exactly what I thought it was going to be. Um, so, you know, kind of a mixed bag. He's going to hit the ball hard. He's going to hit it for power, but don't expect him to walk. Um, I think that's going to be the thing. If you're looking for OBP, stay away from Tyler Naquin. But if you're looking for more power numbers, he may be somebody you look at if you're, if you're sort of desperate or sort of just looking for better power numbers. Tyler Naquin may be the guy to, to, to take a look at. And, and beware, sh- beware of platoon risk with him, though. Uh, he, he's, he's been great at playing yeah. every day, though. Yeah, he, he's week. been playing every day, but his numbers drop pretty drastically against lefties. Oh, is, um, is he playing every day because Brandon Drury didn't get vaccinated? And so no, he he, he's playing every day because they traded Jesse Winker and everyone else on that team. <laughs> Well, and well, though, wait, I mean, wait, like wait, Nick Senzel's hurt, too. I think the, the idea was for Senzel. I think Senzel's hurt, right? I believe he's always hurt. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the thing that we talked about? Let's see. They have a man. They have a <laughs> their injured list might as well be a 25 man roster. They have so many injuries. There. India is hurt. Uh, I saw Jake, a tweet. I saw a tweet this morning. It was like, is Jonathan India dead? <laughs> he might as well be. Shit. I mean, ugh. it's like it was supposed to be a low key injury and I just haven't heard anything back. No, I mean, it was a hamstring. It was, oh, like, it was that's that's what it was. OK, it was. And uh, it was pretty serious the first time. But the Reds and they decided, that, you know what? He's ready to go. Let's just put him out there. And, of course, he re-aggravates re- it, tries to play through with it. And now the injury is a lot worse than, because they were like, well, you know, we it, it, he should have been out for a lot longer. But we decided that, you know, if he can withstand the pain, then he, he can come back a lot sooner. So he's basically they're justifying it by saying he's basically uh, missing the time that he should have missed the first time around. Like, well, well, that's freaking great. You should have missed, then you should have make him, you know, get well rested, you know, Get his rest in, get his rehab in, but no, they decided to. Nah, let's let's see if he can play through with it. And now he's missing all of May because of it. Okay, so. Nick Senzel is uh, on the IL. He's currently on a rehab assignment. Um, okay, there you so. go. 
Uh, Jake Freely, Freely, sorry, Jake Freely's also on the injured list. A lot of guys injured, and then Aristides Aquino, who was supposed he, to platoon with him, he, he got just called, got he, called up. Yeah, because he was DFA'd, but they they brought him up because they had um, Al Moore went on the restricted list. Yeah, uh, Brandon Jury did, so they had to call up some guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see here, Eli White. Uh, he's just been getting grabbed on, but man, he I mean, for this month he's just been brutal. So I really don't want to. Yeah, I saw a bunch of people we... adding him like in the last little bit, and I was like, "Where is this coming from?" Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, I mean, do you have any insight on that? Do we? Is it really no. someone that we need to talk about? I, I, I think it's a stolen base thing. Like people were just looking for stolen bases because yes, I know he's zero stolen bases. It because he's super duper. Oh, fast. I see. My bad. Six stolen bases in the month oh. of May, but he hasn't. The last time he stole a base was back in May sixteenth. Yeah, that so was... a week ago. How about oh. a week ago? Week ago. How about oh. a week ago? Week ago. Yeah, oh, he, he's like he's like Feels insanely like fast. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Hundred hundredth percentile in sprint speed, and I want to say he had a, a pretty large track record. Actually, okay. no, he didn't in the minors. Um. Oh, okay, never mind. He had in the minors fifty nine career stolen bases in four hundred forty six games. Yeah. So okay. like that. I mean, that's not a lot though. That's. He never stole more than 18, and that year he got caught nine times as well. So <laughs> that's not that great. So, yeah, I, I don't know what the the deal with uh, Eli White is, but I do know that Jonathan Hello, Baza. You can, can you still hear me or no? Yeah, yeah, we I, hear you. I got you. Yeah. Right, I, I, uh, did I we do... lose Sean then? I think so. Oh, oh man. You guys can't hear me? Happy face. I'm talking. You guys can't <laughs> hear me? I'm going to see if I can screenshot that. Oh, hell. 